Hello, everybody. I am a global nationalist. I support nationalism in my country, India, and in all countries around the globe. Today, I'm going to be talking about nationalism in a South Asian country. The country for today is Pakistan and their deportation of Afghan refugees. Afghan refugees have been coming into Pakistan in several waves ever since the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 79. Then that was the first uh, movement. Then when the conflict between the Afghan Mujahideen and the Soviet Union started, more Afghans uh, entered Pakistan. And mind you, that conflict was sponsored by Pakistan along with the US. So Pakistan is partly responsible for that deportation, that immigration into their country of refugees. Then when the uh, Taliban took over in 96, I think, there was another wave of immigration into Pakistan, which again, I say, I'll just put some responsibility of that onto Pakistan because they supported the Taliban. Then uh, when the US invaded Afghanistan, more refugees entered Pakistan, but that I won't support, I won't blame Pakistan for it. They didn't participate in that invasion of Afghanistan. Then when the Taliban again took over Afghanistan uh, in 2021, again, many more Afghans immigrated into Pakistan as refugees. Now this, I understand, as far as I understand it, many of these people are uh, came legally. They did not have the necessary documents to enter, which is unlawful and uh, wrong. If you're entering a country, you should enter legally. You shouldn't violate their borders. But I also sympathize with them because they were uh, in a war zone and had to escape. But still, even then, you have to do it legally. It's just the right thing to do. And if you can't escape, you just stay within the country and try to survive. You can't just uh, violate another country's borders. That's not okay. If they did it, it's understandable and it's something you can sympathize with, but still wrong, morally and illegally. <coughs> And legally wrong. Sorry, I have a mm, sore throat. More than this, though, there have been, uh, there's a problem that many of these Afghan refugees are, do not have the necessary documents to live in Pakistan, which is why Pakistan wants to deport them. Uh, so those that's the history of Afghan refugees in Pakistan. Now let's get into details of the current deportation drive. In October 2023, the government of Pakistan announced a plan to deport foreign nationals who either do not have valid visas or have overstayed their visa for more than one year. The mass deportations affect primarily Afghans who fled to Pakistan after Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan. There were 3.8 million Afghans in Pakistan at the time of the deportation order was announced. Afghans accounted for 95% of the foreign nationals in Pakistan. Deportations were to start from 1st November 2023. An estimated 200,000 Afghans have had left Pakistan by then. The Pakistani government this week has announced that undocumented Afghans awaiting paperwork to resettle to a third country will be allowed to stay in Pakistan for two more months. The extension of the deadline on Wednesday from the end of this year to February 29 comes amid Pakistan's drive to expel more than one million foreigners living in the country without paperwork. 
I agree with this. I think that those who need to go to a third country will t- take time to uh, get the necessary uh, paperwork. And so they're giving them more uh, months to stay in Pakistan is the humane move. And the trying to deport them otherwise would uh, cause a lot of backlash among the refugees. And, uh, yeah, and they're trying to expel more than 1 million foreigners living in the country without paperwork. This is the key. They are not expelling all Afghans from Pakistan. They're only expelling those who are in the country without paperwork, who are basically illegal immigrants. They have every right to do so. According to the United Nations Refugee Agency, UNHCR, more than 450,000 people have returned to neighboring Afghanistan since the deportation campaign began in early October. Nearly 90% of them did so voluntarily, according to the Pakistani government, but the UNHCR says they cited fear of arrest as the primary reason for the decision to leave. Announcing the extension, Interim Information Minister Murtaza Sulanki said, Anybody overstaying the new deadline would be fined $100 monthly with a cap set at $800. So, uh, yeah, I don't know why uh, Pakistan's government said that 90% have left voluntarily. Uh, you haven't given them an option. You said that they would be deported if they did not leave. So... I guess that's voluntary. It's not, but it's not normally voluntary. It's not like they just without any warning from the government left. They were warned by the government to leave. So, well, yeah, I'll not get doubt, caught up in semantics. And yes, uh, many of them, the refugees, according to the UN, have cited fear of arrest as the primary reason for decision to leave. So not all were voluntary. And I have no problem with that. If they left because they feared arrest, of course they would be arrested if they were staying beyond uh, legally allowed time. And yes, those who uh, stay back even after the new deadline for which they have three months to meet, they should be fined. I don't know if uh, $100 is the correct amount, but I'm not aware what the normal fine for overstaying refugees is in countries. So I can't say that, but I do agree a fine should be kept. This announcement followed a visit to Pakistan by U.S. State Department officials to discuss the issue of Afghan refugees. It is estimated that nearly 25,000 Afghans require paperwork for resettlement to the United States. Well, then the U.S. better uh, get to it and start uh, working to take them in. Of course, I hope the U.S. makes sure that now these are terrorists in disguise and is careful who they take in. Which, of, but with Biden in office, I have my doubts about that. Pakistan estimates that more than 1.7 million Afghan nationals have long lived in the country without documents, with the majority arriving in different waves since the Soviet invasion in 1979. And... Uh, this is a problem if uh, this many people are living in your country illegally, they have to be deported. And the U.S. should not be getting involved in this issue. They've been criticizing Pakistan's government for this, which is unnecessary. It's their internal matter of who they deport or who they allow into the country. The U.S. should just keep quiet. And so should the U.N. The U.N., this is not... Uh, Technically, bilateral issue for the UN to get involved. It's an internal matter of Pakistan. They have a right to deport. And Afghanistan cannot reject their own citizens from being deported to their own country. The last such major influx of 
Afghan refugees, which is estimated to be 600,000, 800,000, took place after the Taliban took over in 2021. Pakistani authorities have cited a dramatic surge in violence this year. There have been more than 600 attacks in the first 11 months of 2023 for the deportation drive. Uh, this is because many of the Afghans uh, who immigrated are not really immigrants. They're terrorists, uh, Taliban terrorists, uh, part of the Afghan Taliban, and some also have uh, probably joined the Pakistan Taliban mainly because they're Pashtuns who don't uh, agree with the Duran line and want uh, Pashtuns to live unitedly together. Of course, not all Pashtuns in Pakistan us are anti-Pakistan want to merge with Afghanistan. Most of them are loyal, the le legal citizens at least. I'm talking about the illegal immigrants. So if these refugees are causing terrorist attacks in the country, then they have to be deported. I completely support Pakistan in this. <clears throat> so what do I think about all this? I agree with it. I agree that Pakistan should deport those who legally immigrated to their country, including refugees. And uh, yeah, the refugees never have a right to stay within the country. Again, they're refugees. They stay for a while when their country is in turmoil and in, dan in a dangerous place to stay, but they leave when the uh, situation normalizes. And the Pakistan government claims that the that Afghanistan is safer now and I agree with them you can see my views on the Af Afghan government in the link on the uh, screen to another video so uh, yeah this is what I think I don't like the fact that um, the US is getting involved and the UN and I've seen some Indian political commentators criticizing Pakistan for this. I think that's those criticisms don't have merit. I agree that Pakistan is responsible in some part for taking in refugees, but that it still doesn't uh, mean that Afghans can illegally immigrate to Pakistan. Sorry, laws have to be followed. I know it's hard for them, but they still have to do it. And even if they couldn't, they then they should have tried to get citizenship uh, during their time in Pakistan. And if they couldn't, out in these decades, they should have left. Illegally staying in the country is a crime. And also, India had a, passed a law, the Citizenship Amendment Act, which would end and was planning to pass a National Registry of Citizens Act, which together would allow India to give citizenship to immigrants from Pakistan, Afghanistan, and Bangladesh who are not Muslims, who are facing religious persecution. And uh, those, and NRC would be conducted, which would make a registry of all citizens in India. And some, this, uh, people claim that this was somehow a plan for India to deport all Muslims from its country, which was not true. It was never the plan, and nothing in the act said that. What would have happened was that those immigrants who came because of religious persecution from within their own countries would be given citizenship. Now, Muslims are always not going to be persecuted within Islamic countries, Duh. So they wouldn't have gotten citizenship, obviously. And those would have been illegal immigrants into India. They would have been deported. And uh, Indian Muslims would have been able to prove their citizenship, obviously, because they're citizens. So they wouldn't be deported. This was not a danger to Indian Muslims at all, in any way, shape, or form. So, but... Uh, 
Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan criticized this act by India and I found that criticism in, like invalid, incorrect and the fact that the Pakistan government is now deporting its own legal immigrants shows their hypocrisy towards India. So yeah, I think that India and Pakistan both have to decide that they are not going to allow legal immigrants to re enter their countries and they have to be deported. So yeah, there's no reason to criticize each either country for this and they sh uh, actually we should support uh, their respective governments when they take a action in their national interest. Personally, I'm surprised that the current Pakistan government, which is very much an establishment crony uh, uh, rule, is doing this and something in Pakistan's national interest. But I still, and I know that they're doing this because they fear getting beat by uh, the opposition in next election. But even if though they are doing this, I hope that Pakistanis find a way to bring back Imran Khan into power. And even if he isn't standing because he's in jail, I yeah still hope they can manage. Of course, I'm not telling Pakistanis what to do. I'm just saying what I hope I, they should do, what ultimately uh, they have a right to make their own decisions. And uh, it's not my place to tell them what to do and who to vote for and who to elect. So, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Please share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this video, click the like button. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. If you want to see other videos about nationalism in South Asian countries, click here. If you want to see my previous video, click here. If you want to see the sources I use for this video, click the links in the description below. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.